Welcome back to the Bob and Brian Show. I'm Brian Fellow with my co-host, Bob Fry. And today we're doing something a little bit different. We're talking about barriers to giving. And uh, Bob, you and I were talking about pornography. So uh, let's talk about that some more. (laughs) Oh, Brian, 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 Brian. We were talking about politics as a form of pornography. (laughs) And, And I've been thinking about it over the last several months. Uh, you and I have talked about it several times. Yeah. And, and I really do think that, that for many of us, politics and following politics and paying attention to it is, mm-hmm. is a form of pornography. That yeah. it's, it's addictive and it doesn't lead to, for the most part, to anything that we can actually do or benefit from. Yeah. And so, you know, you look at the, I don't know, look at the conversation that's going on right now around Afghanistan and right, left or sideways. Have, have you heard anybody say anything that's other than fearful? Yeah, it's, it's pretty toxic. Yeah. 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 And, you know, Paul, I, it, Bob, I like the idea of pornography as analysis to as analogous to politics, because if we think about pornography, when, when when we look at pornography, it kind of rewires our brain. It doesn't kind of, it rewires our brain to look at everyone as less than human beings and things to gratify ourselves. And, and I think the news cycle is very similar because when we're going through this endless feed that is, and by the way, they're all crafted by marketing people to create anger and disgust and fear and when we do that, we begin to look at everybody as either people that are champions of our team or people that we hate. And man, what a huge barrier to giving because, you know, what, what does that make us? Uh, yeah. And I was, um, I was looking the other day and I just came across it in the normal course of my Bible studies on uh, Luke chapter seven. And there are three wonderful stories there in which uh, Jesus heals people or deals with them in some really loving way the centurion servant and then the woman whose son had died and then finally in the home of simon the leper the Mm. uh the sinful woman from town who is uh uh, kissing jesus feet and anointing them uh with oil and washing them with her hair um in all three of those stories jesus is ignoring things like politics in order to do the work that God has sent him to do. So just look at the first one, which is the centurion servant. The Roman centurion is a representative of the conquering government. He's, he's He's the representative of Rome, who are the conquerors Mm -hmm. of Israel, right? And, and he's also a Gentile. And so just on so many levels, Jesus as a Jew should not be happy to be dealing with this person or, or helping him. And he, he ignores that. He ignores the politics and just looks through to the heart and soul and the need and the opportunity for ministry. Mm. And, and when he uh, heals the centurion servant, he refers to the centurion as in these glowing terms, I, I haven't seen this kind of faith anywhere else in Israel. Mm. And it's a bit analogous to if we had a, you know, a, a Christian missionary doctor in Kabul and the Taliban commander asked him to come and take care of his son. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, wow. Okay. Do you, what do you say? You say, Oh no, no, you're the Taliban. I'm not going to do that. Or do you, you follow your mission and purpose and calling in life to reach out and, and heal the sick kid. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it just reminds me of some, somebody told me you can, it's pretty easy to hate people from a distance, but you really can't love people unless you're up close and actually hands-on and doing it. And, and that just, it reminds me of that. Yeah. So, I mean, I need to say by confession, way of confession that I've probably looked at news feeds, uh, you know, 25 times a day over the last six, eight weeks on different things that, uh, you know, the, the California recall election, uh, the, 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 the uh, removal of uh, Governor Cuomo from office, and then, you know, the mask mandates and 
the uh, whole problems in Afghanistan. And, you know, in all four of those, there's, there's an opportunity for uh, either false hope or anger or some combination of those things. And it simply does not bring me to uh, a place that God wants me to be. Yeah, well, gu guilty as charged here too. Um, yeah, same, yeah, same, same, yeah. same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, you know, what, what, what should we be doing? Okay. And um, you said something about, uh, was it Matthew 24? What was that that you mentioned? Yeah, Matthew 24. You know, the, I, I just, the words of Jesus just caught me uh, thinking about this Afghanistan thing. And, uh, and he says, you will hear wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. Right. Uh, but the end is still to come. And, and I, I think Jesus is saying, you know, you can't change the world. There's a track that the world is on that no matter how good a Christian you are, you're not going to change it. <laughs> we, right. can, we can do things within the context of this bigger narrative, but gosh, we're, we're not in control. Yeah. And there's so much in the New Testament the whole Bible about not being afraid. I mean, yeah. the first words that anybody speaks about Jesus, arguably, are the angels to the shepherds. Fear not. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yo, guys, don't be afraid. And there are many, many passages in the New Testament, you know, Paul's letter in the Philippians, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious yeah, about when, anything. When we're anxious, how, how, how much are we re really in the mindset where we're going to give or be attentive to the needs of others? You know, uh, fear and anxiety just kind of puts us into our own self-centered world so easily. At least it does for me. Right. So instead of, you know, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and asking with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So the answer is, is fairly simple, that instead of wallowing in the news cycle, we can pray, let God change our hearts. And then there are good things that we can do. And our friends in Atlanta uh, published a wonderful article this last week on uh, the Saturday 7 called evacuating afghanistan 10 plus ways you can help and i think you said we can put a link to it in this video yep and anybody yep and anybody that goes online and does a, a web search for evacuating afghanistan and cf you'll find that article and it describes a number of different ministries who are in afghanistan helping those people and many of whom are going to stay which is wonderful yeah yeah yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, the best way to, you know, get out of the endless news cycle is just to, just to replace that habit. You mentioned Carl Jung is the, the guy that said, you know, you, we're, we're not going to get rid of habits. We just replace them. So let's replace the habit of uh, the endless news feed that at least you and I are on. And I got a feeling a lot more people are on uh, with prayer and, uh, and pulling out our checkbooks and doing something useful in the world instead of just, you know, being taken off course by the enemy of our soul. So uh, that's, right. that's your encouragement of the day to uh, deal with uh, one barrier to giving at least. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll be back soon with, uh, with more tips on uh, tax market giving strategies for 2021. We'll talk to you then.